Welcome back, and it's another Madness board. This is what happens. I've been talking about this so much in videos lately, I was like, well, let's take a look at it. So, from memory, I remembered who lost all the Stanley Cup Finals. Now, one of the keys to remembering who lost every Stanley Cup Final is when a team you cheer for loses kind of every other year or every third year. That helps. A lot. I don't have Minnesota North Stars magnets of this size, so... I have Dallas Stars there, so I apologize, but that's the only team that's moved that I have a logo on the board um, that that they had uh, before they after they after they moved. So apologies to Minnesota because that was where it came in. 1981, 87 points that year for the Minnesota North Stars. They weren't expected to go on this run. It was very unexpected, and then they ran into the Islanders in the final, and that turned out the way it was expected. They were ninth overall in the NHL, 87 points. The year before, they were in the semifinals. The year after, the division semifinals, they lost. So, um, they they were out in the first round the year after they did this. So, you know, for Minnesota, it was fun. It didn't last. I do have this one, but we haven't got to that yet. Uh, 1982, of course, then Vancouver goes on a run. Now, they're a team that's below 500, 77 points. And they weren't supposed to get there either. But that year, first place teams got knocked out. So they were helped out by LA and Chicago, and then they rewarded LA and Chicago by knocking them out. But they were 11th overall in the National Hockey League that year, 11th out of 21 teams. Uh, 1981, they lost in the preliminary round, which is the first round, uh, and they lost in the division semifinal in 1983, which is also the first round. So they're fancy ways of saying, and then they lost in the first round. Uh, Vancouver wouldn't get out of the first round again for quite a while. And so that was a one and done. Uh, Minnesota's wasn't supposed to be. They were seen as a good young team. It just never quite uh, added up for them. 1983, the Edmonton Oilers, 106 points. They ran into the Islanders in the final. And this was the, well, the Islanders aren't Stanley Cup champions. They're not going to be. They can't play defense. That was the conversation that came out of that. 1982, they lost in the division semifinal. So they lost in the first round against the Kings. 1984, they win the Stanley Cup. They were third overall in the NHL in 1983. They were on their way. This was the last learning experience they had to have before they won. 1984, the Islanders lost against the Oilers in the rematch. So they're the finalists that year. 104 points, which was second. Interestingly enough, better regular season for the Islanders than they had in 83. But in the playoffs, they just they ran out of gas. Uh, so 1983, of course, Stanley Cup for them. 1985, they lost in the division final. So this, this was the last hurrah for the New York Islanders. 1985, it is the Philadelphia Flyers who make it to the final. Uh, 113 points, which was first overall in the NHL. So we remember the 80s as being this great era of the Oilers. But during the regular season, yeah, uh, the Flyers were pretty good. Uh, and they had Pelly Lindbergh, and, and things looked pretty good for them. Uh, 1984, they were out in the division semifinals. So they were out in the first round. They were out in the first round the year after as well. Although Pelly Lindbergh passed in a car accident, that really threw off Philadelphia for a bit there. But they'd recover, and it was it was kind of inspiring to see. 1986. This is an interesting little object of note here. Uh, the the Calgary Flames, who were sixth overall in the NHL, finally win the Battle of Alberta. They were at 89 points that year. Uh, they they knocked off the Edmonton Oilers, and they went on to the Stanley Cup Final, where they lost against Montreal. 1985. They lost the division semifinal, which is round one. They lost in round one again in 1987. Both of those series against the Winnipeg Jets. So, yeah, for the Calgary Flames, interesting, just noteworthy thing there. 1987, with 100 points, the Philadelphia Flyers are your finalists that year. Uh, they were second overall in the National Hockey League with 100 points. See, 100 points used to be a big deal. It used to be, man, that team got 100 points. Now it's, so half the league has 100 points. Um, 1986, they lost in the first in the first round, as you see right here. And then in 1988, they lost in the first round either. So, division semifinals, 84, 86, and 88. In 85 and 87, they went to the Stanley Cup final. And, of course, Ron Hextall was the goalie that year and won the Conn Smythe in the loss. Uh, they were second overall in the NHL, and it looked like the Flyers were going to win another Stanley Cup. It was only a matter of time. And it, it just didn't happen. 1988, with 94 points, they were fourth overall in the NHL, the Boston Bruins. Acquiring Andy Moog and all that. Although Reggie Lemelin was the starter at this stage too. Um, 
1987 and 1989, they lost in the division semifinal in 87. They lost in the division final in 89. Both of those losses were to Montreal. There was a rule that Montreal and Boston had to play each other every single year. For almost a decade, they played each other every single year. Uh, so, yeah, they were the finalists that year. And, of course, they ran into the Oilers in the final. And that just wasn't going to work out in their favor. 1989, the Montreal Canadiens finalists. 115 points, which was second overall behind only the Calgary Flames, who they would meet in the final. So the first and second overall teams met in the final that year. 1988, uh, they lost in the division final. 1999 or 1990, they lost in the division final as well. Both of those were against Boston. So again, Boston and Montreal take each other out regularly. That was a great time to be a hockey fan. It really was. 1990, Boston goes to the Stanley Cup final. They lose. Remember, the logo you see a lot on the board here, that's the team that lost. Uh, 101 points for Boston that year, which was first. First overall in the NHL at 101 points. Again, 100 points was not easy to, easy to come by. 1989, they lost in the division final. 1991, they lost in the conference final against Pittsburgh. Uh, but yeah, they were first overall in 1990. Again, couldn't beat Edmonton in the playoffs. 1991, or rely on power in their own building. 1991, so this one right here. Why would Shannon want a 1991 Stanley Cup final? Uh, because they weren't supposed to be there. The ultimate not supposed to be there until this point. They were 16th overall in the NHL. They had 68 points. And I'm going to be honest, they weren't a very good team. The Minnesota North Stars that season had a miserable year. But in the playoffs, it all added up. And as the only, I'm pretty sure I was the only Minnesota North Stars fan of any sort in my school. I was probably the only one in my school that was excited about it. Uh, and then, of course, they met Pittsburgh in the final, and it was ugly. Pittsburgh was just so much better. Well, Mario, right? So the famous, oh, baby goal, that was against John Casey and the Pittsburgh or the Minnesota North Stars, so you're welcome. Um, so it's a source of pride and pain that they made it to the Stanley Cup final. It was great, and then Pittsburgh, there was, there was no chance. People talk about whether or not it's a sweep like that matters. I, I, I get it. You know, it's nice to see a team lose in five, maybe even in six, but it doesn't mean the series was in any doubt. Uh, for Minnesota, they lost in the division semifinal in both 1990 and 1992. So Stanley Cup playoff success was not a thing for the Minnesota North Stars outside of those two runs to the Stanley Cup final. 1992, it is an unexpected run from the Chicago Blackhawks that year. They had 87 points, which was eighth in the NHL. Now it's a lot better than the 68 points that was put up by Minnesota the year before. But again, Chicago went on a nice winning streak and then that winning streak came to an end when they met Pittsburgh, who also were on a nice winning streak in those playoffs. Those were playoffs that you would have thought they were renting the ice by the hour and they wanted to get them done with because all the series were ending in sweeps. So uh, division semifinal loss in 1991 and in 1993 by Chicago. This was a great miracle run and then it was done. And uh, that was, it was a lot of fun to watch. That was, that was, a, that was honestly a year where I was really cheering for Chicago. And in the end, it just, they just didn't have it against Pittsburgh, but I don't know that anybody would have. 1993, the LA Kings break the hearts of Toronto fans everywhere. The LA Kings were 11th overall in the league, 88 points. They weren't very good at points of that season. They were downright bad at certain parts of that season. And yet... When they needed it in the playoffs, they got over the hump and they got all the way to the final where they would lose to Montreal. 1992, they were division semifinalists. 1994, the year after that run in 93, they weren't even in the playoffs. So that's where the that's the first time we see that on the board where a team makes it to the finals and wasn't in the playoffs the year after. But that would become more of a thing. And the league's expanding, so missing the playoffs is easier and easier to do. 1994, 85 points for Vancouver. That was in 84 games. They were not very good that year, but they got hot at the right time. They were the number seven seed in the West, and then they got red hot. Uh, they were 14th overall in the National Hockey League. Uh, 1993, they were in, they were division finalists. 1995, they lost in the second round as conference semifinalists. The interesting thing to me with 94 was it felt like the team was getting further away from a cup. They had this great run. And then in 95, they were definitely getting further away from the cup. Uh, 1995 was a year that Detroit makes it to the final. So they were number one in the NHL with 70 points. That's over a 48-game schedule, right? So their first overall, they make it to the final. It was like, hey, they're finally going to overcome these decades of, of not having Stanley Cup championships. No, they're not. Uh, they lost against New Jersey. 
and that was a, a source of great embarrassment for them, but also a great teaching moment. Uh, they lost in the conference quarterfinals, so in round one in 1994. They lost in the conference finals against Colorado in 1980, or 1996. So this is where Detroit's starting to learn how to win, although after losing in the final and then losing in the conference final the year after, there was definitely discussions at the time about whether or not they were actually going to end up winning a championship at some point. 1996, this of course is the year of the rat if you're a Florida fan because uh, there were rats all over the ice. They were a 92-point team during the regular season. They were 7th overall. Not a lot was expected of them, and then they went to the final. Uh, 1995, they didn't reach the playoffs at all. And of course, 1997, they made the playoffs, but they lost in the first round. They have yet to win a round since that Stanley Cup final appearance in 1996. 1997, the Flyers are back. 103 points. They were 4th overall in the NHL that year. 1996, they lost in the conference semifinals, so the second round. 1998, they were out in the first round, conference quarterfinals. So for 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 Philly again, it's they they don't seem to have this ability to back to back years get get it done, and it's been something we've been talking about lately with them even making the playoffs. They don't seem to do that in back to back years. 1998. Weird year. So Washington makes the final. Now what's interesting is it's about a decade after they looked like they were contenders, couldn't get over the hump. Uh, that team in 1998 had 92 points. They were eighth overall. Nothing was expected of them going to the playoffs. They were not expected to make it to that final. In fact, in 1997 and 1999, they missed the playoffs both years. So lightning in a bottle, they get to the final and they run into a Detroit team that was pretty darn near unstoppable. So as excited as I got for Washington, as soon as that final started, I went, oh, this is done, isn't it? And yeah, it was, was done. It does happen. It really does. 1999, with 91 points, Buffalo was ninth overall in the NHL. They had Dominic Hasek. So with Hasek, it's hard to get them out of the playoffs. They were conference finalists in 1998, conference quarterfinalists in 2000. So they were out in the first round the year after. But again, it they this was their best opportunity. We all know about the Hall skate and the crease and all of that. And uh, for Dallas, that was their 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 last hurrah. Little did we know, because in 2000, Dallas goes back to the Stanley Cup final and loses against New Jersey. Now for Dallas, 102 points that year. They were sixth overall. Uh, 1999, of course, the year before they had the Cup. And in 2001, they lost in the conference semifinals. So. It, it, it started degrading for Dallas pretty quickly. 2001, the New Jersey Devils, a year after being Stanley Cup champions, they lose in the finals against Colorado. 111 points that year, which was third. So this shows the, the difference between points and how, how much easier it is to get them now compared to before. 111 points is third. 101 points is first, right? Uh, for, for New Jersey, Cup winners in 2000. In 2002, they lost in the conference quarterfinals. So they lost in the first round the year after that. 2002, this is where you get into another big underdog story, and they happen. You have an underdog, underdog story in 91, underdog story in uh, 82, uh, 94. Vancouver likes being the underdogs. I'd even say Buffalo in 99. And then 2002, you've got Carolina, 16th overall in the league with 91 points. The Southeast Division sucks. That's what everybody says. And yet, here's Carolina. They were conference quarterfinalists. Uh, it, or they lost the conference quarterfinal in 2001, and then in 2003, they didn't make the playoffs. So there is still that feast or famine with Carolina that was a thing throughout most of their history until the last couple of years, where it's either you go to the third round or you'll make the playoffs. So no playoffs for them the year after they went to the Stanley Cup final. Archer survey, huge part of that. 2003, 95 points for the Anaheim Ducks, 11th. Overall, and this is why that year I felt like for Vancouver, hey, they've got a real shot if they can beat Minnesota, and they're out. So yeah, uh, 2002, no playoffs for Minnes or for Anaheim. 2004, no playoffs for Anaheim. Lightning in a bottle. That's what it is. You just you get in there. Doesn't matter how you get in there. It's how you perform when you're in the playoffs. Don't care how a team gets there. Once they're in, they're in. That's fine. Uh, and Anaheim was an example of that. Not a favorite on anybody's scorecard at the start of the playoffs, but by the end. We were pretty impressed with the way they played the trap. Very, very impressive hockey played by them. 2004, Calgary. And I know Flames fans are still upset 17 years later. That's all right. That's fine. Um, 94 points that year for 12th overall in the NHL. 2003, they did not make the playoffs. In 2006, because remember, there wasn't a cup in 2005. 2006, 
uh, they lost in the conference quarterfinals. So they lost uh, first round the year after that, or two years after that, the season after that. Is that acceptable? I think that's acceptable. So for the Flames, it was a good run. Uh, again, you know, unexpected. 12th, uh, Miko Kiprasov playing a huge part in that. And, of course, disappointing in the finals. Still arguments about that goal and whether or not that was a goal. I, I get why they didn't call it a goal, but I also understand why people are upset. 2006, 95 points for the Oilers. They barely get in. They were 14th overall. And uh, those loser points become a thing because... They had more loser points than other teams behind them. And you know what? Again, they get in. They get in their 14th, and they go all the way to the final. And this, of course, was, this, of course, was with Chris Pronger on the blue line. The interesting thing is they don't make the playoffs in 2004. They don't make the playoffs in 2007. They went a long time without playoffs after this run to the Stanley Cup final. That's why I tell people, enjoy it while it's happening. Enjoy that experience of being in the final. Um, 2007, of your team being in the final. 2007. 105 points for the Ottawa Senators. They were ninth overall in the NHL that year. So very good team. A lot of good teams at that stage. 2006, they lost in the conference semifinal. 2008, they lost in the conference quarterfinal. So the year after this, they lost in the first round. Uh, 2008, 102 points for the up-and-coming Pittsburgh Penguins, who were fifth overall in the NHL that year. Uh, 2007, the year before, they were out in the first round, conference quarterfinal. And of course, in 2009, they win the Stanley Cup. They won the Stanley Cup against the team that had beaten them the year before, the Detroit Red Wings. 2009, the last time the Red Wings make the play, make the Stanley Cup final. 112 points for the Wings that year, third overall in the NHL. Uh, 2008, as I said, they won a Stanley Cup. 2010, they lost in the conference semifinals, so they lost in the second round. 2010, that's the year of Philadelphia, 88 points. Remember the year where, yeah, you don't need a goalie. You just, you just get like four of them. Just get like four of them. Whoever's in net's in net, you know, whoever's the third caller that day gets to go in net. I don't know. It doesn't matter. So that was that was a legit conversation about whether or not you needed to pay goaltenders because Philadelphia, with four different guys, it didn't seem to matter uh, who was in net. And if one guy wasn't having a great game, just throw the other guy in and you win. There you go. Easy. We, we don't understand the big deal. Um, so yeah, 2009, they lost in the conference quarterfinals. And then in 2011, they lost the conference semifinals. Now, interesting note about the 2010 Philadelphia team. They came back from 3-0 down against Boston. Not only did they come back from 3-0 down in the series, they came back from 3-0 down in Game 7 against Boston. So overall, it was an embarrassment if you're a Boston fan. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, 2011, oh, embarrassments. Here we are, Vancouver. 117 points for the Vancouver Canucks. They were first overall in the league. They would lose to Boston in the finals. Uh, 2010, they lost in the conference semifinal against Chicago. And then in 2012, they lost the conference quarterfinals against LA. So first round, they rode against LA. And in 2011, they slayed the beast that was the Chicago Blackhawks. But it was all for naught. Uh, Chicago would win a couple of Stanley Cups after that. So they didn't feel bad for long. 2012, it is the New Jersey Devils who went on a run. What was interesting with New Jersey was this was clearly a run designed around the idea that it was the last hurrah for Marty Berdur. New Jersey was ninth overall in the NHL that, we, that year with 102 points. Uh, 2011, no playoffs. 2013 also, no playoffs. They gave it everything they had. They just ran into a Kings team in the finals that, yeah, Jonathan Quick wasn't letting that one get past them. 2013, it is Boston in the Stanley Cup final that loses against Chicago. Uh, 62 points that year. It was only a 48 game season. So yes, it's fewer points than was had by the Minnesota North Stars, but they also had a lot fewer games. 2012, Boston lost in the conference quarterfinal, so in the first round. Uh, 2014, they lost in round two against Montreal. So Montreal becomes the bane of their existence. Yet again, it's a bad matchup for Boston. Uh, although Tampa has become that bad matchup for Boston. I'm, I might be the only person that was happy the Islanders knocked out Boston because I was like, I, I can't handle Tampa knocking them out again. I can't do it. So uh, it's, maybe that's just me. Uh, 2014, with 96 points, the Rangers finished 12th in the NHL, but with Henrik Lundqvist in net, they end up in the final. Uh, 2013, they were in the conference semifinal, so they lost in round two. They were in the conference final in 2015 against Tampa, which was a great series. So the Rangers had some pretty good sustained success during that period. 2015, it is Tampa that reaches the Stanley Cup final. 108 points, fifth overall in the NHL. Yeah, Tampa's been pretty good for a while, 
2014, they lost in the first round. 2016, they lost in the conference final. So again, conference finals a couple of times, a couple Stanley Cup finals, and it looks like it's going to be a couple of Stanley Cups as well for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Not too shabby. Uh, 2016, the San Jose Sharks, 98 points. They ended up making the finals. What was interesting with that was they're 11th overall in the NHL. Nobody's picking them at the start of the playoffs. San Jose was a team that would have been a sexier pick back in this region here. But they end up getting to the finals in 2016. 2015, they hadn't actually made the playoffs. And in 2017, they lost in the first round. So there's that lightning in a bottle. Again, a team getting that opportunity and rallying and going, okay, guys, this might be our last, last go around. Let's give this a shot. 2017, Nashville, 94 points. They were 17th in the NHL. Did not finish in the top 16. It's, it's you know, there's Philly, who were 18th overall in the NHL in 2010, and Nashville, who are 17th and, and somehow managed to make it into the playoffs. So, again, you can get into the whole who doesn't deserve to make it and who does. And I'm going to do that video as well. That'll be a madness video like this. But for Nashville, again, they take advantage. They have 94 points. Nobody's expecting anything from us. And they went all the way to the finals. And it was pretty obvious pretty quickly that Pittsburgh was going to knock them out. But still, they got there. Um, 2016 and 2018, they lost in the second round both years. 2018, of course, Vegas. The ultimate first year. 109 points. They're fifth overall in the NHL. 2017, they were being born. So no playoffs when you're being born. And 2019, of course, they lost in the first round. They had that 3-1 series lead on San Jose. That's the infamous San Jose comeback there. And the five-minute major and all of that 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 entails. 2019, Boston reaches the finals yet again. There's Boston. One, uh, two, three. That's four Bostons. They're up there a lot. It's not cup wins either. It's just finals. Um, 107 points. Third overall in the NHL. Uh, 2018 and 2020, they were out in the second round. So... It's not quite a lightning in a bottle situation because Boston has been pretty good for the last decade, but you did get the feeling in 2019 that was probably the last Stanley Cup final run this team might have had in it. Uh, 2020, Dallas comes out of nowhere. And I say that because with 82 points and 69 games played, they were 10th overall in the NHL uh, at the time of the pause. So this was not a team that was seen as a contender at the time of the pause. 10th overall. Not able to score, but again, you get to the playoffs, and then it's a whole other ball game, right? Uh, 2019, they were out in the second round against Dallas or against St. Louis, which it's a problem for Dallas. St. Louis is definitely a problem for Dallas. Uh, 2021, of course, no playoffs this year for Dallas. None. We'll see if they get back in next year. And of course, right now we're looking at Montreal down three games to nothing, and this is the reason why I've put this board together. 59 points in 56 games this year, 18th overall in the standings. So if you look at it, Philadelphia 18th overall, Nashville 17th overall. Both of these teams made the playoffs the year after. Both of these teams made the second round the year after that they went to the finals. So there's not necessarily a correlation that Montreal doesn't make the playoffs next year. Last year, they were out in the first round. Again, they should have been below the playoff line, but Pittsburgh, who were the number five seed, could not defeat the number 12 seed that was Montreal. More importantly, couldn't solve Carey Price. And so that gifted the spot to Montreal because Pittsburgh couldn't close it out. And then Montreal gave Philadelphia a hard time of it. It was not an easy round for Philadelphia either. So what do they do next year? That's the big question mark, isn't it? Because if, if Montreal can follow the pattern of other teams that were below seven, six, 16th overall, uh, the teams that were 16th too, so you have the Minnesota North Stars here. They end up division semifinalists. So they were out in the first round the year after. Uh, and Carolina missed the playoffs the year after. So of the teams that were 16th or below that I can see just looking over this board, uh, three out of the four ended up making the playoffs the year after. So it's up to Montreal to see what they can do. It, it is more, more and more difficult to make the playoffs every year. I know people complain about who does or doesn't make it. But comparatively speaking, with back when I came into watching the game where 16 out of 21 teams made the playoffs, next year it'll be 16 out of 32. So it is much more difficult to make the playoffs. And I think it's just as, just as impressive when you see a team that's a lower seed uh, go on a bit of a run like this. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. And yes... If it turns out that Montreal comes back, wins four in a row against Tampa Bay Lightning, 
and magically is the Stanley Cup champion a week from now, we'll do a whole different video and we'll talk all about that. I, I don't think I have anything to worry about there, but you never know. And, and if, if that happens, it was the ultimate reverse jinx ever pulled in the history of the internet. It's not going to happen. All right. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.